Oh, hi. I brought in the samples of the transition metals. These are transition metal complexes. Some absolutely gorgeous, greatest color in the whole world, orange, made out of a uh, chromium transition metal complex. Some copper, two plus, some copper. This one here happens to be nickel. And this one is a uh, nickel two, just beautiful in color. This is sugar. It doesn't have any metal in it. It's copper, hydrogen, and oxygen. You have that lack of color. And uh, you also get a couple of ugly colors. Uh, we'll just hide these. The um, colors are due to what's called splitting of the d orbitals. Now these transition metals have some electrons in the d orbitals. The way that we do this little treatment is say that the d orbitals are not all at the same energy level. At the beginning, we might consider five of the d orbitals, for example, the three d's. To put this into context, let's go ahead and do a little review. We have an energy diagram, E. Down at the bottom, we have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, on and on with the 4s, and there are the three d's. Now, these three d orbitals are degenerate. They have the same energy level for an atom. However, we're not in an atom. What we have is a transition metal complex where we have a metal ion in the center with things coming in, these ligands coming in, and that's affecting these orbitals. Two of these orbitals split high and three of them split low, and that's because of the orientation of the lobes on the d orbitals. So what I'm going to do is show the splitting of the d orbitals. Now if I select one of the metal ions, let me go ahead and select, oh, let's go with chromium 3 plus. Chromium 3 plus. According to the periodic table of the elements, chromium is in group number 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I just count over from the left. And with transition metals, when they have a charge, we go ahead and back off and have all the remaining electrons in the d orbitals. So chromium 3 plus is in group 6, but it has a 3 plus charge. So we write it as D3, meaning chromium, the metal, without the charge, has 6 valence electrons, but we lose 3. They come out of the 4s orbital, and we're left with all d electrons. So group 6 minus 3 is 3. So we have 3 d electrons. Let's put these into our scheme right here. In the transition metal complex, these three electrons would all sit down low. Now, when photons strike this transition metal complex, meaning light hits it, the electrons are excited. So the electrons are promoted. Perhaps this one I can send up here. Well, that's just fine. And when it falls back down, when it falls back down, it gives off light, or H nu, Planck's constant times the frequency. And this corresponds to the color that we're seeing. Now, this can be tuned. You can choose a different metal, and it's going to have different splitting. You can choose different ligands. For example, you can go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and put some chloride around this, or I'm going to go ahead and put some potassium and some fluoride around this one. And so you tune it, meaning you're making the adjustment. The smaller the splitting, the lower the energy. So we're talking about red, orange, or yellow. If you go ahead and increase the splitting, higher energy, Roy G. Biv, so you're over at the blue of the indigo or the violet region. So this explains splitting and the colors generated by these transition metal complexes.